What's up guys, back here to another video. Um, so sorry that it's been a long time. Uh, work, the business, things just kind of get out of hand. I don't have enough time to sit down and make a quality video. So, gonna make a new video today. This is like probably the third series that we're on right now. We're in the middle of like three series, I think. We're doing the home lab, the AI lab, which I haven't really debuted yet, so you'll find out about that. And then this lab, um, we're gonna be putting some exurbs in a rack. And we're going to be doing a kind of like series on them. We want to do an X serve with X sand project. So yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started on it. And I'll uh, go ahead and show you guys the uh, the rack. All right. So as you guys can see, this is where everything happens. The magic happens in here. Um, we've got the main lab. It is not operational. Everything's on, but nothing's like activated or anything like that. You still have a lot to do with this. The final, the final um, things that we were waiting for came uh, finally showed up. So I'll go ahead and bring them over here. We're in the a uh, couple more 40 gig cards, and then the rest of the uh, QSFP cables got plenty of those. So uh, we'll definitely be getting uh, this thing up and running. Uh, right now, it's not really running. It has operating systems just as a test. Uh, just testing everything, making sure it works. Um, I'm actually bringing you guys around the back. So, can't really see, but everything's wired up for the most part. Um, but it's funny because we actually have to tear all this down. I was just testing it, uh, making sure everything works. Uh, as you can see, we don't. You know, one of the ports on the 40 gig card stopped working on the cable. Um, definitely still have a little bit of kinks to work out with the hardware, but we're definitely going to be making a nice hour or two long video of setting this thing up. Uh, at least the initial part of it. Like, uh, the operating systems and whatnot. AC unit. Um, of course, we've got the AI rack, which you guys haven't really um, seen too much of yet. Sorry, it's so dark. Lighting in here sucks. But um, yeah, this is something that we'll be getting into in depth very, very soon on. Um, the rest of the parts for this came in. Um, very excited to get this. I think this is going to be a popular project, to be honest with you. And then here is setup, and then the third rack. So uh, I got this from work. They're gonna throw it away. I figured, you know, what's another rack when I have two, right? So we're gonna be putting the X serves in here. The X serves are gonna go probably two or three slots down, um, and I'm moving them out of here. Um, we're gonna make some more room for two more servers that are be coming in, hopefully the next month or two. Uh, some new storage servers. We're gonna be retiring. Uh, this guy, it's funny because this is a generation uh, HP DL380 and uh, this uses more power than the three of these combined. So yeah, it, it's obviously because they have spinning discs, so it's not a, exactly a one-to-one -one comparison. However, it is uh, definitely different. So yeah, we're gonna be replacing this with a, uh, an equivalent LGA 3647 platform. Um, I'm not gonna spoil it, but it is not an HP server. And, uh, well, they are not HP servers, so, uh, yeah. They're pretty cool when they actually come in. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So, these are the four X servers. Um, well, let me see if I can get some better light here. Alright, so this is a little bit better of lighting. So, these are the four X servers. These are 2009 models. They are dual processor, um, 2.66 GHz um, quad core a piece. So, it's two quad core processors for a total of eight cores. Uh, 16 threads. This is a DDR3 based. These are DDR3 based systems. Uh, SAS2 based systems, depending on the caddy. Um, SAS and SATA. We're going to be flashing these to a Mac Pro 5.1 firmware. Number one. Number two. We're going to be upgrading the processors to some uh, nice uh, dual 3 gigahertz processors. Some uh, so we can get 12 cores a piece. We're going to try to max out the RAM in them because DDR3 is super cheap. And then after all that stuff is said and done, we're going to try to do XSAN on it. So very excited to try to get this up and running. Um, the project will probably end up evolving as we go further. So yeah, very, very excited. Um, but first things first, we're going to have to disconnect and remove the two D3600s that are on top of this. Uh, so I'm actually going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to have to shut all this. I'm gonna have to shut all this stuff down, so let me go ahead and get started on that. All right, as you guys can see, D3600s are out. Now we can go ahead and start planning on where we're gonna put these extra. So I think I'm gonna put them as close to the top as possible. 
Um, we are going to have to pull all this crap out. Um, this is pretty much junk. Uh, we can't use any of this stuff. I mean, we've got uh, KVM, but we've got IPMI, so we're not going to use that. So, I'm going to go ahead and take all this stuff out, because we're definitely not going to use this. Alright, so you guys can kind of see what we're working with here. Um, we've got this uh, KVM switch to pay on top. And then we've also got a uh, APC UPS, or uh, uninterruptible power supply, down there. So I'm going to go ahead and start by just taking this crap out because, like I said, we're not going to need that. We're not going to even be able to use it um, because this is like an old KVM or an old KVM switch. So yeah, I'll check the angle here. Alright, so really simple process getting them in and getting them out. Let's see here, bring the light because lighting in here is trash. As you guys can see, just slid them right in there. Um, I had a shelf underneath, so I went ahead and just used that. I do not have rails for these because uh, the rails are really hard to find, and when you do find them, people want a bajillion dollars for them, and I'm not paying a dime over ten dollars for a set of X-Serve rails. So, yeah, that's that. So, in case you guys are not familiar with the X-Serves, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys one up close. So here it is, guys. Here is a 2009 uh, Intel Xeon X-Serve, two LGA. Uh, I can't forget. I'll put them on the screen. What these CPUs are? They're 2.66 gigahertz quad cores. Um, I think it's got like 48 gigs of RAM right now. As you guys can see, the two sockets, very nice. Um, we'll go over, over here. So this is where things get a little interesting. Um, with Xserve, you had a option from Apple to have an integrated RAID controller, quote unquote. It's not an actual RAID controller, but it is a RAID controller. Um, and you can tell the difference if they actually have uh, heat sinks on them. As you can see, this one does not have the heat sinks on them. And then what you're probably thinking is, oh, okay, uh, well, you're gonna get swap this out for a RAID controller one, right? No. So these um, ones are actually the more desirable ones. The RAID controllers tend to have issues with drives over two terabytes, and obviously we're going to be filling this up probably with some six to ten terabyte drives. All of these, and um, yeah, so it should make things a lot easier. The um, boot drive is going to be a NVMe drive of sort, uh, so we're going to have the NVMe drive in there, and then our network controller right there. So very, very uh, should be a fun project. Some fast storage. Uh, XAN, and then this will be my this cluster will run my um, goodness gracious this cluster will run my time machine backups um, instead of our syncing it onto this giant um, 60 terabyte array. Uh, I think it's 60 terabytes between uh, the G9 and the two D3600s, which are, are going to be replaced anyway. Well, I don't know if these are going to be replaced, but we're definitely replacing the, the G9. Um, I'm sorry for making all these changes, making changes instead of getting to the software. I really, I know you guys really want to see the software stuff, um, but it just takes time. I'm very indecisive when it comes to hardware, and I honestly, I think hardware is the fun part, and the software is kind of the boring part anyway. So yeah. Anyway, back to the X serve. Let's go ahead and get the switch mounted up. All right. So the X servers are in. Um, well, I think what I'm going to end up doing is putting. Um, I'm going to have two switches eventually. I'm going to have a fiber switch that's probably going to be 10 gigabit. Uh, I can get those very inexpensive. And I think I'm going to have a, well, I'm going to have a gigabit switch. And I think I'm going to put the gigabit switch in the back, just like how I did with this rack over here. So I'm going to do it just like kind of how I did with this rack. So as you guys can see, we've got the 40 gig Nexus in the front with all our nice uh, QSFB connections. I like this better. And then we've got the... Um, Giggy switch back there for all your management and uh, the Gigabit Infinite connections. Uh, as you guys can kind of see there, I really like these uh, cables. I used these on a job site one time and I fell in love with them. Um, so I'm definitely going to be buying some more of those, I think. Um, I have the same thing on this rack, as you guys can see. Uh, I do have a crap ton of, uh, of regular Cat5 cables, but um, I'm going to wait to get the pretty ones. So, yeah, guys. Uh, let's go ahead and get the switch mounted up in the back. We're going to be using a Cisco um, 2960, I think. I'm going to go get it real quick. All right, guys. So things are a little crooked here, but you guys can kind of get an idea of uh, 
what we're working with here as far as I.O. goes. Uh, what kind of I.O. we're working with here um, on the back of the Xserve. So uh, obviously we got our power. Um, you've got two Firewire 800s, USB 2, two gigabit Ethernet, a mini display port, which is awesome, and a serial connection. So if 2009, this being on here instead of like a standard VGA, I think it's a very cool connection. So glad this is not like a DVI because these actually do have graphics cards in them. They have GT120 512 megabyte cards, um, GDDR3, I think. So um, appropriate for the era, which is 2009. So um, this bottom one has a 10 gigabit card. Uh, Mac OS has very limited 10 gigabit support, um, like the older Mac OS operating systems. So this is only going to run, I think. Uh, even with the patch or some old version, I have to double check. Um, these are actually a very particular card. These are Solar Flare um, 10 gigabit Ethernet cards, which there are drivers, they exist. So I'm gonna buy three more of these and that will be our networking stack. And then obviously we'll fill up these ones with our um, PCI NVMe SSDs once we flash it. Now the thing about flashing these things is we're gonna have to update the firmware to a Mac Pro firmware so we can actually accept the 10 gigabit I'm um, sorry, not the tank, but the uh, NVMe SSDs and boot from them. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be doing that in probably one of the later videos. But, uh, yeah, guys, let's go ahead and get this other crap out of here. And then we're going to go ahead and mount the switch. So, I think the switch is going to go right underneath. So, let's go ahead and get started here. Okay. Oh. All right, so what I went ahead and did is just slide this in, and now I'm gonna go ahead and rack it in, or screw it in. Um, should be very simple, very easy. Uh, let's see here. I think these bolts are slightly different, so these might not actually work. Um, let's see. Oh, maybe they will work, cool. Wasn't sure if they're gonna work or not. Very nice, very nice, very nice. And last but not least, don't have a little shield for this one, so it is what it is. Cool. And that's in. Alright, now um, we're gonna need some network cables, but um, I don't think I have enough. I'm gonna go double check to see if I get any more, but I think I do not. So, this is a Cisco 3750X, I think I said 2960 before, but um, all I could find was four. So, <laughs> we'll make it work with what I got. Um, we'll start back here, why not? We'll do one, two, three, four. Nice, and then we'll just run these guys right over here, just like so. One, two, three. Oh, wait, oh, I missed one. <laughs> Four. Look at that. Nice. Let me just run that just like that. What do you guys think? Good enough? Let's get some cable ties on that. Let me, let me grab some cable ties real quick. All right, and that's pretty much it. Just did a quick and dirty. One right there, one right there. Uh, it does slope down a little bit, but it is what it is. Not really to worry about it. Um, but guys, I changed it anyway to run the secondary cable. But uh, yeah, guys. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Good gracious. All right, so yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, not really too much else um, here. I don't have anything else to add to it. I don't have cables. I don't have uh, network cable, network cards, or anything like that. So. Um, yeah, this is going to be a lot slower pace of a project than the uh, other rack or the AI rack. So, um, yeah, guys, pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, please put any questions, comments down in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.